Good morning. We're going to get started. I'm going to ask for your cooperation. Thank you very much. If the members will take their seat. To we have our quorum established. Okay. Our folks, I ask you all to please hold the voices down. Thank you. To give our invocation this morning, the chair recognizes Pastor Joey Ferginick of the Block Church. All right. He is here today as the guest of Councilman Al Taubenberger. I would ask all members, guests, and visitors to please rise. Good morning. Let us bow our heads and pray. God, our Father, you are so gracious and merciful. We don't deserve how good you are and how loving you've been. So with thanksgiving, we offer this moment as praise. We know your mercies are fresh each morning, brand new for all who call on you and receive by faith the favor and wisdom you offer. Each day is a gift, and today we unwrap this opportunity with great enthusiasm, passion, and also trepidation. Less of us, more of you. If we decrease, you increase, not our truth, but your truth. Not our will, but your will. Jesus, make us more like you. Help us love like you, see the world like you, heal the broken like you, be patient like you. And do unto others how you did to us. Because while we were far from you, full of pride and selfish indignation, you came in and gave us abundant life, forgiveness, and limitless opportunity. We become new creation under your sacrifice and shed blood on the cross. We rise because you resurrected, and it is only you who can raise our city, raise our children, raise our convicted, raise our single mothers, and raise our neighborhoods back to life. Help us live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us and no one will find fault with our work. And all we do, help us show we are true workers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships, calamities of every kind, or even working to exhaustion for your name. Let us prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the spirit within us and by our sincere love. May your power within us serve our city. We serve you, God whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. We are honest, even if they call us imposters. We are faithful, even if we are ignored. Whether in office or not, our hearts ache for our city, and we always have joy. We might be poor, but we still give spiritual riches to others. We may own nothing, yet we have everything. Please today, teach us to offer hope to others, even those who we don't think deserve it. We choose not to just be good Philadelphians, but good Samaritans and citizens of heaven. We are ambassadors to our city, and we will treat the least of these as if, as if they were you. I pray wisdom over this body today. Give new insights into minds of your leaders. You are the father of the lights. Creativity is what you do. Love is who you are. So show us how to solve problems with ingenuity, to answer the cries of the addict, to protect our vulnerable children, to shape young minds for good, to protect life in the womb and foster life beyond it. We are resolute. My city, my responsibility. Our city, our responsibility. As we near our final amen, let us raise a hallelujah and a victorious declaration that you've never lost a battle and you never will. We thank you that you could have put anyone here at any time in history. You could have put Abraham or Moses, Esther or Elijah or the Apostle Paul even, but instead you chose us to carry out our city's legacy of freedom from slavery, equality from bondage and identity as children of God. So we cry out for an overflow of goodness an abundance of influence, unexpected blessing, and childlike wonder. We declare the best days for Philadelphia are ahead of us, and we won't be moved. So finally, let us agree that politics won't shake us, partisan pettiness won't break us, and hate won't change us. We are not waiting on peace. We are makers of peace who carry confidence directly from heaven. This is your city. We are your people in Philadelphia as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. We genuinely appreciate those inspiring words. Council, be at ease.
Thank you very much. And our next order of business will be the approval of the journal. And the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, October 31st, 2019 be approved. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and probably second that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, October 31st, 2019 stand approved. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and the journal is approved. In our next order of business is request for leave of absence. And the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Councilman, hold on a second. Folks, can you all please, like, stop talking? Thank you. Thank you. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the majority, there are no requests of leave of absence today. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. The chair now recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the Republicans, there are no requests for leave of absence. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. At this time, I would like to dispense with the regular order of business, and I would like to thank and welcome everyone who has come down to witness their government in action today. Uh, we genuinely appreciate you being here. Uh, we hope your stay here today is a knowledgeable one, uh, but more importantly, a pleasurable one, so much so that you come back again. Again, thank you for being here. <clears throat> At this time, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker, who presented a resolution honoring Charmaine Matlock-Turner. With Ms. Matlock-Turner and those accompanying her, please join the Councilwoman at the podium. I'm sorry. At, at, let me do this first, Councilwoman. Yeah, yeah. And I would like to recognize uh, one of my former bosses, uh, Councilwoman Marion Tasco. And joining Councilwoman Parker, we have Councilwoman Gim, Councilman Dom, Councilwoman Bass, Councilman Green, Councilman Johnson, Councilman Heenan and Councilwoman Gim. And Yeah, got you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Philadelphia, you all don't know it, but we just pulled off the greatest heist in the world this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> For those of you who are, who are at home watching us on television, um, there are few men and women who can make a noteworthy mention of their commitment to our great city, like the woman standing to my left with the Delta red jacket on, with strong ties to both West, Northwest Philadelphia, great service in North Philadelphia and throughout our entire city. Um, we know her as a lot of things. Her name is formerly, as the president noted, Charmaine Matlock Turner. However, to me, she is Tony's wife. That's right. She is Ayana's mother. She is Naima's mother, and she is Josh's grandmother. And if both Charmaine Matlock Turner and Marion Tass go in the same room, neither of them go by their names. Their names are one word each. If you're talking about Charmaine Matlock Turner, the only thing you say, especially if you're in an election day war room, general. <laughs> and when Tass goes in the room, she is boss. <laughs> Uh, so it is a great honor um, and privilege for us to present Charmaine Matlock Turner uh, with this resolution uh, today. She is the president of the Urban Affairs Coalition, and you are going to hear an overview from all of our council colleagues about her contributions to
to our great city through a plethora of organizations. The only thing I want to mention for the record, Charmaine, is that I did not think it was humanly possible to have served as a community organizer, uh, a campaign manager, uh, a committee person, to work in corporate America, the healthcare industry, the nonprofit sector, and to be one of those people we watch on Sunday morning. And you'll hear about that a little bit more. Let's give a round of applause as my colleagues come forward to make this presentation. So we'll note again for the record that this is a resolution honoring and recognizing Charmaine Matlock Turner, Urban Affairs Coalition President and CEO. Whereas, 8th District resident and my neighbor, right. <laughs> the Urban Affairs Coalition, formerly GPUAC, with more than 350 employees, in partnership with a diverse board of directors made up of business, nonprofit, and community leaders, unites government, businesses, neighborhoods, and individual initiatives to improve the quality of life in the region. And I'm going to try to stay far from her because she might be a little bit upset at me right now. <laughs> Charmaine is the co-chair of, of the Poverty Committee, and I um, kind of lied to her all morning, so I'm sorry, Charmaine, F from an impromptu meeting to everything else. But we love you, uh, and I worked under the general in one of my first elections, and thank you so much for all your service. Whereas the organization's efforts are focused in four areas, improving life chances chances for youth and young adults, building wealth in low-income communities, forging strategic partnerships, and strengthening the nonprofit se sector through fiscal sponsorship. The organization has successfully managed more than a billion dollars in social capital over its 50-year history and Whereas successful UAC initiatives include programs to end homelessness, HIV AIDS education, a bankers collaborative that drives community investment, a multi-partner citywide effort to close the digital divide, a citywide campaign to employ Philadelphia's low-income teens during the summer, a partnership in the city of Philadelphia's free quality pre-K programs, co-convening of the Philadelphia's Read by Fourth campaign, and consulting to improve contracting and employment opportunities for women and people of color in commercial construction, and parents who are trying to fight for their public schools, and... Whereas Charmaine Matlock Turner serves on numerous committees, including her recent appointment by Council President Darrell Clark, as co-chair of the Special Committee on Poverty Reduction and Prevention, and her appointment by Governor Tom Wolf to the Pennsylvania Redistricting Reform Commission. Mayor Jim Kenney appointed her to the Workforce Development Steering Committee. She serves on the Independence Health Group Advisory Board for Consumer and Business Affairs. She chairs the Fashion District Economic Opportunity Oversight Committee, and she serves on the Comcast Innovation Center Economic Opportunity Oversight Committee and I'm going to transition the mic to someone that is no stranger to this room, Councilmember Marion Tasca. Whereas, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Whereas, Charmaine Matlock Turner serves on the following civic, government, business, and education boards Pierce College, the Regional Federal Reserve Bank, Bank's Economic, and the um, Economic and Community Advisory Council, Entrepreneur Works, the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia, and the Children's Scholarship Fund of Philadelphia, Uplift Solutions, the Philadelphia Council for College and Career Success, Foundation's National Advisory Board, and United Way of Greater Philadelphia and Southern New Jersey. She is a co-founder and chair of the 20-year-old West Oak Lane Charter School a founding member of the National Network of Fiscal Sponsors, and a guest host on 6ABC's public affairs television program, Inside Story. And? Whereas the Council of the City of Philadelphia is pleased 
and proud to honor and recognize this sorority sister. <laughs> I didn't even know it was red. And confidant, Charmaine Matlock Turner, Urban Affairs Coalition President and CEO on the occasion of UAC's 50th anniversary and the 20th anniversary of her leadership with the distinction of shattering another glass ceiling, being the first woman at the helm of UAC. Now, therefore, be it. I would like to also take a moment to acknowledge Ms. Matlock Turner's work as it relates to making sure um, that we provide high quality job opportunities for our young people throughout the summer and most recently throughout the year. Also acknowledge her hard work and dedication. Um, next week we'll be giving away um, close to thousands of Thanksgiving Day baskets um, to families in need. But most importantly, um, her tutoring me and mentoring me around the issue of redlining working with UAC to hold banks accountable to make sure they're investing um, in neighborhoods, predominantly with people of color, and also making sure that when we address the issue of gentrification, um, individuals have the opportunity to become first-time home buyers in gentrifying neighbors. And I'm going to personally just say thank you for your efforts in working with me along those issues. Therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that it, that it hereby honors and recognizes Charmaine Matlock Turner, CEO of the Urban Affairs Coalition, and further resolve. Further resolve that the path and legacy has been set for another 50 more years, <laughs> all right, because of all of the accomplishments and partners that have been brought together in how serving Philadelphia and surrounding counties. Further be resolved that the engrossed copy of this resolution be presented to Charmaine Matlock Turner as evidence of the sincere sentiments of this legislative body. Congratulations. <laughs> And for today's inside story, the chair recognizes Charmaine Matlock Turner for remarks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now, my office knows that I am a stickler for preparing remarks, so I cannot believe how you got me here today um, with no notes or anything in front of me, um, but in front of this wonderful, wonderful group of people who I've had the opportunity to work with over the years. Um, some part of my career, I was sitting in some of those seats back there as a, as a city council staffer. Um, I worked in Harrisburg, both in the House uh, and in the Senate. Um, I rode around with my good friend, Councilwoman Marion Tasco, and we always talked about what we could do to make a difference in the world. Uh, I babysat her son, she babysat my kids uh, as we were out knocking on doors uh, and trying to make a difference. And I always remember how she was so helpful and supportive to me that I was always, always, always committed to make sure that I would take one more minute, one more day, one more call to be there to support the men and women who I know are committed to driving change and to make sure that the city of Philadelphia is a great place for us to live, work, and play. So I just want to thank um, Council President Clark and all of city council for uh, this wonderful recognition, not just of me, but really the 50 years of an organization that started right around the corner after the assassination of Dr. King at 12th and Market Street, at was what the PS, which was the PSFS building, where people came together, led by an iconic leader, Charles Charlie Bowser, and other community activists who said, we can find a way to work together if we invest our time, our talent, and treasure in our city and in our community. And I hope that I've been able to keep the faith for that work and I will continue as long as I can to make sure that Philadelphia is a place for us all. Thank you all very, very much. Council Biddies.
Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on. Folks, if we can get a little bit of quiet, we have to move on. Thank you. Um, at this point, I, I'd like to recognize Councilwoman Blackwell. I believe Councilwoman wants to recognize uh, some individuals and then call on you, Councilwoman, to um, bring forth our next resolution. Thank you very much. I would like to recognize from the heart of the third district some wonderful students from Longstreth Elementary School. They are in the balcony and we hope they will stand. There you go. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you all for coming down. And at this time, uh, I would also like to recognize Councilwoman Blackwell, who presented a resolution naming the 5,000 block of Baltimore Avenue Representative Al Dumas Boulevard. Would the Representative Al Dumas and those accompanying him please join the Councilwoman at the podium? And we also have Councilman Greenlee, Councilwoman Gim, Councilman O. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown and Councilman Dom and Councilwoman Parker and Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Oh, uh, Councilwoman, hold on one second. Folks, could I ask you all to please stop talking or go in, go in the hallway? You know. Thank you, Mr. President. We are very pleased to be able to honor one of our own. When uh, Lucian Blackwell ran for city council and after Charlie Durham uh, resigned to run for judge, and then he chose a gentleman named Algia Dumas, Al Dumas, to succeed him in the 188th legislative district. This gentleman who's been around us, he was a committee man in the 46th Ward where Lou was ward leader and I currently serve. Now he's a committee person in the 51st Ward, so he still serves. He moved over a little from being a committee man in the 46th to the 51st. Many of you saw his sign up. He kept it up for years on Baltimore Avenue. <laughs> that said the 188th Legislative District, but I might note that on October 18th, he turned 91 years old, and he is still around 
to be involved in all aspects of politics in my district and in our city, and we are happy to honor him. Thank you. We thank you for your service. This morning we are, let's start with this here. We are naming the 5,000 block of Baltimore Avenue Representative Al Dumas Boulevard. That calls for a repeat. Representative Al Dumas Boulevard, in honor of State Representative Al Dumas and his dedication to public service. Whereas, born in Birmingham, Alabama on October 18, 1928, State Representative Algia Dumas arrived in the city of Philadelphia in 1947. Ambitious and determined, he set out to make an impact. And whereas over the next 60 years, Representative Dumas focused on achievement, establishing his own brand of success in a plethora of endeavors that reached into a broad cross-section of the city. In 1968, he fulfilled one of his long-held goals as a public servant, and that was winning an election to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives 190, 190th district seat by special election. And Whereas Representative Dumas unfortunately was unable to repeat his historical accomplishment and win re-election. However, he forged ahead and continued making a positive impact on the community and whereas in 1971 he was elected as the president of the West Philadelphia branch NAACP. In 1976 Representative Al Dumas was elected as a Democrat to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives 188th legislative district by special election to serve the remaining 1975 term of the Honorable Lucian E. Blackwell and Whereas Representative Dumas is currently a resident of Southwest Philadelphia. He was married to the late Mar Mary Fanny Dumas for over 60 years. He has four children, Tamara Dumas, Malita Dumas Staley, Elijah Jr., and Gwendolyn Donaldson Dumas. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Philadelphia hereby also named the 5,000 block of Baltimore Avenue, Representative Al Dumas Boulevard in honor of State Representative Al Dumas and his dedication to public service. It takes a lot of work to make those shoes look that cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you. Uh, further resolved that an engrossed copy of this resolution uh, presented to Representative Dumas as a sincere expression of the Council of the City of Philadelphia's gratitude, admiration, and recognition. Ch Chair recognizes Representative Dumas and his son who will make remarks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My father would want me to say he microphone gets in his way sometimes, so he, you know, he, he asked me to speak for him. My father would first want me to thank Councilwoman Janie Blackwell for her introduction of resolution number 190753, as well as the whole of Philadelphia City Council for their recognition of my father, State Representative Al Dumas, for his lifetime of public service and fighting for the community. This recognition means something, and it's especially gratifying because it comes from a body made up of individuals who know and understand the importance of public service. From fighting like hell to stop a gas or water shut off to helping young people get summer jobs, if it helps keep people stay in the position to one day possibly thrive, it means something. My one regret is my mom. Yes, all right. She's here. She's here. 
Mary Dumas is not present among us to see that. Receive this recognition and to remind him, please Dumas, please don't wear that tie. Please, it doesn't match. <laughs> but mom, as you see, he matches beautifully. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Can also be at ease. Thank you, and again, congratulations. And thank you for your service, Representative. Our next order of business is communications, and the chair requests that the Sergeant of Arms delivers the messages from the mayor to the chief clerk. And Mr. Decker, when you're ready, please read those messages from the mayor. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, I am pleased to advise you that on November 6, 2019, I signed all the bills that were passed by Council on October 24, 2019, and that on November 6 and November 12, 2019, I signed all the bills that were passed by Council on October 31, 2019, except Bill Number 190640, which I am returning without my signature. And I am submitting herewith for the consideration of your honorable body. 
a resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority to dispose of certain properties located in the second councilmanic district, which will be transferred by the city to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority by conveyance of such properties to the Philadelphia Land Bank. And an ordinance amending Chapter 13-100 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Water, Sewer, and Stormwater Rates to provide for enforcement of prevailing wage provisions of the code that apply in connection with the receipt of charity water rates. And an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades in a portion of City Plan Number 299 by striking from the City Plan from a point approximately 342 feet southwest of Matthias Street to its terminus approximately 58 feet further southwardly therefrom. And an ordinance authorizing the paving of Parker Avenue from a point approximately 156 feet southwest of Matthias Street to a point approximately 186 feet further southwestwardly therefrom. And an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to convey to the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development all or a portion of a certain parcel or parcels of land in and about the area bounded by University Avenue, Civic Center Boulevard, Hamilton Street, and 34th Street for further conveyance and authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the city to enter into a lease agreement to lease back a portion of the property to the city. And an ordinance authorizing the procurement department to enter into one or more agreements with a vendor or vendors for the purchase of servicing and servicing of online legal research services, investigative tools, and related goods and services. And an ordinance authorizing the issuance from time to time of one or more series of general obligation bonds to provide funds to refund certain outstanding general obligation bonds of the city of Philadelphia, authorizing the mayor, city controller, and city solicitor, or a majority of them to sell the bonds at public or private negotiated sale all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Mr. Decker. You have any additional communications? I have none, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Our next order of business is introduction of bills and resolutions. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown. Good morning, Mr. President. No morning. bills or resolutions this morning. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. Today I introduce 10 bills and one privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. An ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designation of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Cobbs Creek, Baltimore Avenue, 49th Street, Grays Avenue, 58th Street, Springfield Avenue, and Cobbs Creek Parkway. And an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the City of Philadelphia to convey to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority all or a portion of a, of a parcel or parcels of land in and about the area bounded by South 50th Street, Pentridge Street, South 51st Street, and Willows Avenue for further conveyance. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Haverford Avenue, 42nd Street, Powhatan Avenue, Market Street, and 46th Street. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Ogden Street, 40th Street, Parish Street, and Preston Street. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Locust Street, 49th Street, Baltimore Avenue, and 58th Street. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Cedar Avenue, Baltimore Avenue, and 47th Street. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Spring Garden Street, Lancaster Avenue, 38th Street, Hamilton Street, and 31st Street. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Chestnut Street, 45th Street, Ludlow Street, and 46th Street. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Spruce Street, 34th Street, Civic Center Boulevard, and University Avenue. And an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the city to convey to the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development all or a portion of a certain parcel or parcels of land in and about the area bounded by University Avenue, Civic Center Boulevard, Hamilton Street, and 34th Street for further conveyance and authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to enter into a lease agreement to lease back a portion of the property to the city. Those 10 bills just read by the Chief Clerk will be referred to the appropriate departments. And a privilege resolution proclaiming November 16 through 24, 2019 as National Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week in Philadelphia and honoring organizations, advocates, and city workers for their work supporting Philadelphia's most vulnerable. That will be on today's calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. 
Thank you, Ms. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. President. Today, I offer six bills, five of them on your behalf. The other one is uh, co-sponsored by Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance amending section 9212 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Newsstands by revising requirements for sales, design, and advertising. And an ordinance authorizing the Pennsylvania Department of General Services to construct on and maintain a proposed set of non standard bollards at 1503A through 11 Arch Street. And an ordinance authorizing MMB Contractors Incorporated to construct on and maintain hardscaped patios and accessible ramp and planter boxes at 2225 Spring Garden Street. And an ordinance amending the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by 22nd Street, Market Street, 21st Street, and Ludlow Street. And an ordinance authorizing Aspen Operations to install, own, and maintain an open-air sidewalk cafe at 741 North 23rd Street. And an ordinance establishing a no-truck parking regulation on Brown Street between North 22nd Street and Corinthian Streets. Those six bills just read by the Chief Clerk will be referred to the appropriate committee. Chair recognizes Councilman Hina. Thank you, Council President. Today I introduce two bills and offer one resolution. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance amending Section 9205 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sidewalk Sales by allowing for sidewalk sales near the intersection of Cotman Avenue and Bustleton Avenue. For the committee. And an ordinance authorizing the Procurement Department on behalf of the City of Philadelphia to enter into one or more agreements with a vendor or vendors for the purchase of and servicing of online legal research services, investigative tools, and related goods and services. For the committee. And a non-privileged resolution appointing Alexander Balloon to the Board of Directors of the Philadelphia Land Bank. And that will be on next week's calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I have three bills today. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance establishing a no truck parking regulation on the 6600 block of Callahill Street, both sides. And an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines of grades on a portion of city plan number 299 by striking from the city plan Parker Avenue from a point approximately 342 feet southwest of Matthias Street to its terminus approximately 58 feet further southwestwardly therefrom. And an ordinance authorizing the paving of Parker Avenue from a point approximately 156 feet southwest of Matthias Street to a point approximately 186 feet further southwestwardly therefrom. Those three bills will be referred to the appropriate committee. And the chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Council President, I have one bill, one resolution. Thank you, Councilman. You're welcome, Council President. An ordinance amending Bill Number 050670, entitled An Ordinance Granting Permission to Center City ERUV Corporation in order to demarcate the boundaries of a Center City ERUV district to construct and maintain a clear nylon cord and other ancillary facilities, including a maximum of 10 poles along, over, and in certain public rights of way and city streets, and or to attach such demarcation facilities to existing facilities owned by other entities authorized by other city ordinances subject to such owner's consent to modify applicable boundaries, all under certain terms and conditions. For the committee. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority to dispose of certain properties located in the second councilmanic district, which will be transferred by the city next to the Philadelphia calendar. Redevelopment Authority. And that will be on next week's calendar. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I have one privilege, one privilege resolution. Thank you, Councilman. A privilege resolution recognizing the Urban Affairs Coalition on the 50th anniversary of its founding. In this week's calendar, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one privilege resolution and one bill on behalf of the administration. Thank you, Councilwoman.
An ordinance amending Chapter 13, 100 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Water, Sewer, and Storm Water Rates, to provide for enforcement and prevailing wage provisions of the code that apply in connection with the receipt of charity water rates. Committee. And a privilege resolution honoring and recognizing Charmaine Matlock Turner, Open Affairs Coalition President and CEO. Today's calendar. Chair of Canals, Councilman Don. Morning, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank, Thank you. you, Councilman. Chair recognize Councilwoman Kim. Good morning, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger. Good morning, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer three bills. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance authorizing the city solicitor on behalf of the city to enter into a multi-year contract with a provider of codification, editing, and marketing services to produce printed and electronic versions of the Philadelphia Code. For the committee. And an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning by further providing with respect to uses permitted or prohibited in commercial districts. For to committee. And an ordinance amending Chapter 14500 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Overlay Zoning Districts by amending Section 14514 entitled FNE, Far Northeast Overlay District. Also for referred to committee, Chair recognize Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer four bills today. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance authorizes the revision of lines and grades on a portion of City Plan Number 195 by striking from the City Plan and vacating a dead end portion of Cumberland Street extending from Beach Street to its terminus southeastwardly therefrom. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Walnut Street, Front Street, South Street, and 8th Street. And an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Broad Street, Snyder Avenue, 7th Street, and Oregon Avenue. And an ordinance authorizing Cosia Massimo to own and maintain an existing exterior building ramp at 2723 East Cumberland Street. Those four bills will be referred to the appropriate committee. Chair recognize Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer no bills or resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much. Uh, no bills, no resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. That concludes our introduction of bills and resolutions. And our next order of business is reports from the committee. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell for reports from the Committee of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Finance reports out one bill with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read the report. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee on Finance, to which is referred Bill Number 190746, entitled an ordinance amending Section 191508 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Refunds and Forgiveness for Poverty Income, to revise the tax rate. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bill to council with a favorable recommendation. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 190746. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and probably second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 190746. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. And this bill will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Maria Keona Sanchez for commit report from the Committee on Appropriations. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Appropriations reports four bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read that report. The Committee on Appropriations, to which is referred Bill Number 190854, entitled an ordinance amending Bill Number 190152, approved June 19, 2019, entitled, an ordinance to adopt a capital program for the six fiscal years, 2020 through 2025 inclusive. And Bill Number 190855, entitled an ordinance amending Bill Number 190153, approved June 19, 2019, entitled, an ordinance to adopt a fiscal 2020 capital budget. And Bill Number 190856, entitled an ordinance authorizing transfers and appropriations for fiscal year 2020 from the General Fund, the Grants Revenue Fund, and the Grants Revenue Fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions to the General Fund, the Water Fund, the Special Gasoline Tax Fund, and the Aviation Fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. 
And bill number 190857, entitled an ordinance authorizing transfers and appropriations for fiscal year 2019 from the general fund, the grants revenue fund, the aviation fund, and the water fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions, to the aviation fund and the water residual fund, certain all city offices, departments, boards, and commissions. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. The chair again recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the rules council be suspended as to permit first permit first reading this day of bill numbers 190854, 190855, 190856, and 190857. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 190854, 190855, 190856, and 190857. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and these bills will be placed on our free reading calendar today. The chair now recognizes Councilwoman Bass for a report from the Committee on Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs reports two bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read that report. The Committee on Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs, to which is referred Bill Number 190637, entitled An Ordinance Authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to Acquire Fee Simple Title or a Lesser Interest by Purchase, Dedication, Donation, Condemnation, Agreement in Lieu of Condemnation or Otherwise, and Sarah Morris Recreation Center, located at 5800 Walnut Street for Public, Recreational, or Other Purposes. And Bill Number 190765, entitled An Ordinance Authorizing the Commissioner of Philadelphia Parks and Recreation on behalf of the City of Philadelphia to enter into a stormwater easement agreement with the School District of Philadelphia to allow for the management of stormwater discharge from the northern portion of the School District parcels located at 3201 Ryan Avenue and 3001 Ryan Avenue by way of overland flow to the adjacent Pennypack Park. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. The chair again recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 190637 and 190765. Thank you. It's been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended this day so as to permit first reading of bills number 190636, 190765. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be on our first reading calendar today. That concludes our reports on committee. And our next order of business is consideration of the calendar. I note that the bills just reported from committee was the suspension of the rules and been deemed to have had their first reading. They will be placed on our second reading and final passes calendar at our next session of council. As there are no additional bills on the calendar today, Chair recognizes Councilman Heenan for the purpose of calling on bills and resolutions that are on our final passage calendar today. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended to permit the use of a consent agenda to consider the following bills on the second reading and final passage calendars. They are bill numbers 190386, 190080, 190308, 190446, 190452, 190764, 190782, 190803, 190805, 190806. Second. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded that the rules of council be suspended to permit the use of a consent agenda to consider the bills just read by Councilman Heenan. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. The motion carries, and we will consider the consent agenda shortly. Chair now again recognizes Councilman Heenan for the call purpose of calling up bills and resolutions on the regular second reading and final passage calendar today. Thank you, Mr. President. In addition to the bills being considered on the consent agenda, the following resolutions of bills are being called up for the second reading and final passage calendars today. They are bill numbers 190797, 190636, 190601, 190704, 190786, 190802, or 180553, 180969, and 190749. All other bills and resolutions are being held. Thank you, Councilman. Um, before considering these resolutions and bills that are on our final passage calendar today, we will have our public comment session. Uh, the public comment session will go as follows. Um, 
if you are interested in testifying on a bill or resolution that is on the final passage today, um, if you have not already done so, you may sign up at the table to my left. When your name is called, you will go to the podium in the middle of the council chambers. There's a device on that podium. When the light on that device turns green, it will be your time to speak. When it turns yellow, you will have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. Uh, when it turns red, we'd ask that you please adhere to our guidelines and conclude your remarks. Um, we have a, an exhaustive list of individuals who are interested in testifying. Uh, so I will alter the time frame to allow everybody an opportunity uh, to testify. So you'll be given two minutes uh, to testify. So please, if you have some uh, pre-documented uh, testimony, please adjust it to reflect the two minute limit. Uh, thank you very much for your anticipated cooperation. Mr. Decker, please call the first name on the list. Deanna Burney, commenting on 190386. Good morning, my name is Deanna Burney. This is the first time I've given testimony. I'm blessed to be here to talk about the right to counsel bill. I urge everyone to vote yes on this bill. I bring to this work a lifetime as a teacher, counselor, principal, researcher, educator. Housing has a direct effect on student achievement. If children aren't in school every day and the same school, they lose out. One of Dr. Height's main bills is to increase the percentage of children reading at grade level. At present, it's only 36% of eight-year-olds that read at grade level. That means only one out of every three children. I'll bet if we looked at the individual schools, we would find out that there's a lot of variation between that percentage. Some schools might have 98%, some schools might have 10%. This can also be tied to attendance. In my experience, I've had children have to be evicted. I've had people find housing and then be denied later on. I don't believe that there is an at-risk child in this city. What we have are children in risky environments. When we say at-risk child, the impetus is that there's something wrong with the child, that some, the child needs fixing. When we say children in risky environments, that makes us as the adults accountable and responsible for the environments that our children live in. And housing security begets school security. And I think we need to connect the dots between housing, attendance, and the school district does not give attendance data by school. I don't know why. Because I think that this... You have, you have 30 seconds. Oh, thank you. When, I, it, turn, I, when it turns red, you... Just, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I think that this is a good beginning, this right to council bill. But I think we really need to drill down on the attendance by school, the reading achievement by school, and get a unified plan to make sure that all of our children are in safe environments, not risky environments. And I thank you. Thank Bless you. you. Thank you for your testimony. Barrett Marshall, commenting on 190386. Morning. Morning. Thank you. I'm honored to be here on a day that I know is going to be historic for the city of Philadelphia. Thank you, City Council, Council President Clark, and Council Member Gim uh, for the opportunity to testify and to all of the co-sponsors of this bill to create a tenant's right to counsel. I'm Barrett Marshall, Director of the Philadelphia Eviction Prevention Project and Attorney at Community Legal Services. Our work over the last two years with our incredible partners is a demonstration of the power of representation for tenants. We've proven that when we raise the voices of tenants, we create a better world. Together, we have shown that we can prevent homelessness, stabilize communities, fight racism, and stem the rising tide of poverty in this city. You've heard the statistics. The eviction crisis is disproportionately affecting black women and their children. It is tearing apart long-standing communities. It's destroying the possibility of a future for so many families, and it's costing us dearly in every way. What we know is that legal representation has the power to change this, the power to create access, to generate equity, and to save lives. We have seen the difference that this representation makes. We know that home is our foundation, that stable housing is a health measure. 
We know that creating stability for individual families leads to healthy children, thriving communities, and a productive city. We know the value that home has for each of us, and we know how to protect it. But what we must know is that we have work to do. Philadelphians will do the work. Our neighbors, our organizers, and our service providers are extraordinary. We will come together and we will lift each other as we always have. But we need our city behind us. We need your support. Give us the chance to do what is necessary. Give us the chance to do the work here. We're asking you to invest in all of us, in our survival and in our success in the incredible ability that Philadelphians have to come together and create real lasting change. We've already begun and we know what we have to do. We ask that you stick with us, work with us to save our homes and strengthen our communities. We ask that today you see the work that needs to be done. You understand our commitment to each other and to our city. You hear the stories of those testifying and that you pass attendance rights to council. Thank you. Frederica Lightford. Frederica Lightford. Next. Rashida Phillips. Commenting on 190386. Good morning, my name is Rashida Phillips. Morning. Although roughly 3 million people around the country are evicted each year, it is not a coincidence that who gets evicted falls along racial and gender lines, most frequently impacting black women and their children, and in Philadelphia, impacting black families disproportionately in spite of their level of income. It is instead by design that we have gotten ourselves here, and it is only by purposeful and intentional design of better policies that we can begin to unravel those structural and institutional inequities that consistently leave black families and other marginalized and vulnerable people behind. This bill offers a solution that recognizes that legal aid is a cost-effective way of preventing homelessness and can help provide outcomes for families that minimize disruptions to health, safety, employment, and education. PEP, the Mayor's Eviction Prevention Task Force, the Philadelphia Bar Association, and others, the Philly Tenants Union, have done the work and the research to show that although the majority of evictions appear to be over money, there is something deeper, more nuanced, more insidious at the base of these evictions, and that the crisis is a, is a systemic issue, not an individual issue, and one that requires a long-term systemic solution. It recognizes, for example, that our city's housing stock is old and deteriorating, particularly in areas of the city that have seen historic disinvestment and that this leads to housing conditions that by law no resident should be obligated to pay rent for. Yet residents end up paying lifelong prices for their health as their children endure the lifelong impacts of lead poisoning and other harms. They end up with inaccurate eviction records that prevent them from accessing affordable housing for the rest of their lives. This legislation recognizes that because of the desirability of living in our city, our neighborhoods are being rapidly gentrified and seeing disproportionate rent increases and tax increases, such that according to some studies, more than 12,000 African Americans in Philadelphia moved out of gentrifying neighborhoods over a 13 year period. Access to justice is a moral imperative. One's ability to access the justice system and defend their shelter and their home cannot be based on who can afford a lawyer. The scales of justice should never be tipped in favor of a landlord's ability to profit. When we talk about ensuring that every tenant who wants one has the right to access a lawyer, we're not just talking about balancing out the justice system so it can do its job better. What we are talking about is a shift in access to opportunity and power, a shift in whose voice gets heard, a shift in who gets access to the sort of information that could change their future. One of the most innovative aspects of this bill is the requirement to provide community education in neighborhoods directly impacted by the eviction crisis to educate and empower tenants and communities on their housing rights Thank and responsibilities. We Thank urge you to pass this bill Thank today. Thank you. Thank you so much. For this. Agnes Domokais. Commenting on 190386. Morning. Good morning. My name is Agnes Domicase, and I am a member of 1PA. 
I have lived at 1929 Yuba Street for over 15 years, serving as a block captain. Uh, thank you. The property was brought a 31-year-old developer from out of town. He doubled my rent. He made me pay a water bill when I never had to pay one before. There was a huge burden for my husband and me because we were both retired and lived on a fi fixed income. We struggled to make the payments every month, but we never missed one. The landlord often sent people into the apartment unannounced. One time, my husband had a tense interaction with one of the workers. Out of nowhere, we were told we had to move out. When we got the letter, we were upset, scared, and confused. We didn't understand why we would have to move out. My husband was fed up, and he just said, let's go. I asked him, where will we go? Where are we going to move? We don't have any money. There were so many strange things happening, thank you, uh, happening that he didn't care. He was just ready to go. I told him I would call the rental office and find out what was going on. When I called, I was so hurt to find out that the reason they were ready to put us out was because some simple miscommunication between my husband and a maintenance worker. But we both, li we both uh, lived next door to my house. My mother lived next door to my house. I couldn't imagine leaving the community that has meant so much to my family. Wealthy people have access to support and they have a lawyer. Why don't we have one? We deserve the same. All studies show people are less likely to be evicted and have better outcomes with lawyers and in eviction court. Right. With the eviction crisis here in Philadelphia, why wouldn't we take this step to keep people in their homes? I urge city council to pass the right to council today. Thank you. Gabrielle Green. Commenting on 190386. Morning. Good morning. Gabrielle Green. By the grace of God, I have had the wonderful privilege of being both a realtor and an attorney. As such, I've had the opportunity to see firsthand the interrelatedness between laws and public policy as well as the direct effect that these have on individual lives, particularly with respect to housing in Philadelphia. It is my wholehearted belief that this bill will positively impact the lives of thousands of Philadelphians by decreasing the amount of homelessness, eliminating the extreme disparity in representation during landlord-tenant court, while also saving the city thousands of dollars in unnecessary evictions. In my career as a realtor, I've worked with low-income families seeking housing and have watched a number of them get denied, not because of their inability to pay rent, but because of a previous landlord-tenant complaint filed against them. A complaint that many of them didn't fully understand, which led them to appear in court to defend themselves with limited knowledge of the law and without representation. In my career as an attorney, I have found myself constantly trying to navigate Philadelphia's municipal codes and rules of civil procedure. Even after three years of law school and time in practice, I am still at a loss for words. I am still constantly asking other attorneys for guidance and asking questions myself. As I know, I'm not the only one. So how can we expect individuals who have not been trained on the law to understand how to navigate this complex and often confusing system? I recognize that with every step towards progress, there's bound to be opposition. But with this bill, there doesn't have to be. 
80% of landlords have attorneys in landlord-tenant court, whereas 11% of tenants do. This bill is not tipping the scales in favor of tenants to benefit them, it's making an attempt to level them. If there's one thing I've learned in practice, it is that those with the privilege, means, and opportunity have a responsibility to help provide for those who don't. I've personally never faced eviction, but the reality is that evictions disproportionately affect and impact black female heads of households, which means I easily could have been. And that is why I am here. Curtis Shiver. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Curtis Shiver. Um, I'm here today to represent the bill. Um, hopefully, it get passed today. Uh, I'm just thankful for this opportunity. Okay. I'm just thankful for this opportunity today to uh, come up here and speak. I am a previous tenant. Um, I was faced with some financial difficult. Uh, stages during my process of um, landlord-tenant issues. Um, this bill today is truly needed in our city to help families overcome such hurdles of becoming more distressed through the process and protecting families from financial burdens. Um, it also helps avoid the homelessness and mental disturbance amongst homes and criminal activities that's going on throughout our city. Uh, we all view those criminal activity that goes on throughout the day in our city. Um, these are most of the issues on why we face most of the criminal activities in our city. I am a previous um, returning citizen back into our city, and I previously uh, was working with the city of Philadelphia and managed about 280 parks throughout our city, and I witnessed some of the troubles that our youth are facing throughout our city, and the housing uh, problems that we face today with the, with the landlords are some of the reasons that we need to pass this bill today. So I hope you guys uh, take into consideration my statement today and get this bill passed. Thank you. <laughs> Frederica Lightford. Commenting on 190386. Okay. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Got peace and blessings to all. My name is Frederica Lightford. This is my, my first time here in City Council. Um, I'm here because I support the right to counsel. It's very, very important that we have counsel represent us. Sometimes we walk into certain situations and we don't know what it's like. I've never been evicted, but I have had counsel to represent me. And um, it was a victory. So um, I think it's very important that we um, pay attention. A lot of people are being evicted. They don't know their rights. And they don't know that they can have counsel, you know, present them when they are in situations where they have to go before laws that they don't understand. They don't understand the meaning of it. But um, I'm here to say that um, it's a no-brainer. We need it. Thank you. Angela McIver. Commenting on 190386. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Again, I'm Angela McIver, Chief Executive Officer of the Fair Housing Rights Center in Southeastern Pennsylvania. The mission is to ensure equal access to housing opportunities for all people. Now that uh, the Kennedy administration is implementing more measures to ensure equity. Okay, thank you. Equity and equality is befitting that more interests occur in housing. Providing financial support for people that face evictions from their homes is important because that stabilizes families, neighborhoods, and the economy. The right to counsel also indirectly helps residents achieve the goal of securing housing because regardless of the disposition in eviction court, most residents will seek to be rehoused. Having effective counsel during the eviction hearing increases the likelihood that a future housing provider will evaluate a prospective tenant based on a true account of a former landlord-tenant relationship, a fair and just disposition, and access 
to electronic records that are free from error. Within the eviction crisis is a lesser known story that entails residents whose situations are complex and convoluted because their eviction predicament also entails one or more fair housing allegations. For example, when a disabled person needs a reasonable accommodation and comes to the Fair Housing Rights Center for assistance, most times we work with that person to achieve the request, which enables the same person to remain in their home or terminate, terminate at least early without penalty. When the process fails, then the person can seek social justice. From March 2018 through March 2019, 190 intakes occurred. 56% of those intakes involved residents of Philadelphia, and the majority were from people with disabilities. The organization was able to achieve a federal settlement in court with a huge housing management company that uh, would not accept their SSDI payment that did not fall before the fifth of the month. We were able to set a national precedence that should be followed locally as well as in our state. Providing fair housing expertise is what, is what fair housing does, and we have a proven track record of exercising the alternative of untimely evictions, displacement, and institutionalization by using reasonable accommodations. Thank you for an opportunity to testify. Thank you. Mr. Decker, our next speaker, please. Mr. Decker, our next speaker, please. Mike Doyle. Commenting on 190386. Hi, good, um, good morning. My name is Mike Doyle. I'm a resident of Philadelphia and I have been a member of the National Association of Realtors. The Pennsylvania Association of Realtors and local Realtor Association since June of 2006. I am here today to speak in support of Bill number 190386. In our city today, we are facing three very critical and terrible crises. The opioid and substance use disorder epidemic, the gun violence epidemic, and the lack of housing epidemic. It is in my opinion that these three are inextricably linked by one major underlying factor, which is poverty. The need for free legal counsel to tenants is vital to helping eliminate the disruptive, stressful, and punitive nature of eviction. If families and individuals are faced with the possibility of becoming homeless, the obstacles associated with that are often insurmountable. Uncertainty and general feelings of helplessness due to the eviction can lead people to become depressed and vulnerable. I believe it is City Council's responsibility to ensure that they are doing what they can to make sure the citizens of this city have resources, which are included in Bill number 190386, that help stave off the homelessness cycle that is almost impossible to get out of. I also believe that, as a realtor, it is my responsibility to ensure that the rights of tenants are also being defended, not just the investor class. As realtors, we are bound by a code of ethics that not only directs us to advocate and lobby for homeowners, but for all consumers, tenants included. We live in an unfortunate reality in our society now that seems to give power to those who are the wealthiest as opposed to those who are struggling just to pay rent. This is true not just nationally, but in the city of Philadelphia as well. While there may be some landlords that earn their only income from one rental property, it is also true that there may are many, many more who not just earn income from one property, but oftentimes many, many properties. It is in my opinion that investors and developers' interests are often defended first, as opposed to those who are in need of defense the most. Our city is currently experiencing not only an eviction crisis, but an affordable housing and workforce housing crisis as well. You don't have to look far to see the effects of gentrification and new construction with list prices well above 500,000 that always included tax year, tax, 10 year tax abatement. Not too many people I know can afford these homes, and most certainly the rental units in these neighborhoods are increasing their rents and pushing tenants out to their parts of the city, creating a crisis that jumps from one neighbor to another. Thank you very much for letting me speak today, and have a great day. Thank you. Mr. Decker, our next speaker, please. Dan Hyman. Commenting on 190386. Good afternoon. Thank you. Can I come up? 
council members for the opportunity to speak. My name is Dan Hyman. I'm a staff member. I'm a, I'm a staff attorney at the Senior Law Center. At Senior Law Center, we protect the rights of older Pennsylvanians. We're the only nonprofit organization in Pennsylvania whose mission is to dedicate to provide legal protection to senior citizens, one of the few in the nation. We provide free legal assistance to thousands of seniors each year, including victims of elder, and financial, uh, elder abuse and financial exploitation, elders facing crisis, housing crises and homelessness, and grandparents raising grandchildren. In our work, we assist seniors facing eviction and other threats to safe shelter. For many of our clients, various life circumstances, whether it's a sick relative, a health issue, death of a family, or or spouse or family member, or even a change in their landlord's payment system can expose them to a late rent payment or to losing their home. You've already heard about the Stout Report and the financial benefits to the city that will flow from providing uh, Philadelphia residents with counsel during eviction proceedings. I'd look to, like to focus your attention particularly on the unique challenges our, city, our city's elders face when they have unstable housing. Without the time or finances to find a safe place to live, seniors often subject themselves to substandard housing, return to a previous relationship or family member who abused them, or otherwise end up homeless. For older people, losing housing, inst housing instability is life-threatening. Further, we often see multi-generational families facing eviction. This includes grandparents and great-grandparents raising their young grandchildren. This is even more common today due to the opioid crisis and other addictions. With only limited time to secure shelter, older residents frantically try to line up a safe, warm place for their children and grandchildren.